man. So I oughta look this damn good. Cause baby, I feel real good, and I wish y'all would. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Everybody, watch out. Watch out now. I'm ready for a good time, and I came to groove. The whole band's here, and we came to move. Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. We're here all night like we got nothing to lose. I'm coming out the jacket, cause we're turning up the heat. I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot, and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Hello, world. Hey! How's it going? It's going fine. Welcome How to you doing? Levin's Live, episode six. Woo! Woo! Well, world, as you can see, change of location today. This is our first ever live stream from the store. We're not quite open yet. Um, things are changing daily. Uh, today, we are in Montgomery County. Montgomery County has decided that they will not open this Friday like D.C. and Virginia will. So we're still in a holding pattern, um, but we are still shipping. Sales guys are working remote. We got tons of gear in stock. So if you are trying to get some stuff, hit us up. We would love to talk to you. We'd love to work with you. Um, we're ready to rock. Um, but today we got a cool one. Another Chuck Lemons Live episode. We got Sam Burton is here uh, joining us remotely. Uh, Sam, welcome to the world of streaming. Yeah, good to be here. Glad to have you. Uh, well, Sam, why don't you give everyone on the stream a little uh, little rundown who you are, uh, you know, when you started Chuck's, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, my name is Sam. Uh, I started at Chuck's back in 2014, uh, selling drums at the drum counter. Uh, and I'm still here, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, just... Uh, you what? You're in, you're in a couple of bands, right? You're in a couple, uh, mm -hmm. a couple bands. Uh, yeah, yeah. I play in a, an originals band called uh, Prettier in Person, uh, and as well as a like a cover wedding band called The Excellent Drivers. So I've been doing, uh, doing the cover band thing for, I don't know, like probably four years now. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing drums for twenty, selling drums for ten, at Chuck's for six. Um. Yeah, that's probably it's probably a good summary. It's a pretty good, pretty good little resume right there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to have you because I am completely drum illiterate. I know nothing about drums except for the fact that I'm surrounded by them today. Uh huh. Um, so I'm super glad you're here because we got a really cool one today. Um, we're going to talk Ludwig, which is a pretty cool. I mean, brand in general. I mean, it's the, a classic drum band. I mean, you can probably yeah. paint the picture better. All I know is is that. Ludwig is one of these brands that we've been dealing with literally since the beginning. I yep. mean, in our in our 62 year history, we've dealt with a lot of brands for several decades, but Ludwig yeah. is one of the ones, one of the OG brands that we were dealing with down in the H Street store in DC. Yeah. So like set the stage a little bit, like tell me a little bit about, you know, Ludwig from the from the 50,000 foot view that you might see uh, if you were taking a rocket launch at 430 today uh, with Tesla. Um, who is who is Ludwig and uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, well, I you know I don't I'm not going to pretend to be a historian, uh, but Ludwig's been making drums for decades and decades and decades. You know, way before you and I ever existed, Adam. Um, <laughs> they uh, are probably most well known for uh, two of their uh, snare drums, the Superphonic and the Black Beauty, uh, which everybody on the planet has heard at least about thirty thousand times. Uh, those snares were used to record every popular song you've ever heard in your entire life, whether it was recorded in the fifties, whether it was recorded yesterday, um, those are it. Uh, and they make some awesome drum sets too, obviously. Uh, but that's, that's kind of like the real core of what they are is that, you know, they, you know, they're the American drum sound is, is kind of how I usually summarize them. Yeah. And you only, you only last that long if you make good stuff, you know, you don't, you don't get to last decades and decades if you're just making garbage. So, yeah. um, Ludwig has, has, uh, kept the name and, and, and notoriety for that long and, and been at the top, you know, top caliber of drum manufacturers for the longest time. So it's really cool to have, um, someone from the factory here today. And, um, I think before we jump into it, like we've been doing the last couple of weeks, got a pretty cool giveaway, yeah. uh, that we want to get people involved with. So, for those of you watching, for those in the comments, uh, Brian, Harmony, Ed, 
Thanks for being here. Um, we are going to give away a boom little snare case. Yeah, Ludwig Atlas snare case in a super cool red and black. Mm -hmm. Faux free. If you want to enter to win, um, drop in a drum emoji into the comments. And at the end of the stream, you could be one of those winners. And we might have a little extra something something if this stream picks up some steam. So share this with your friends. If you're watching the stream right now, hit that share button. Uh, get your friends involved. If you know a drummer, tag another drummer in the stream because it's going to be a cool one. Um, but I think without any further ado, um, Sam, why don't you uh, introduce our, our guest today? Sure. So our guest today is Josh Touchton from Ludwig Drums HQ. Let's bring him in. How are you, boys? Hey, Josh. How you doing? Well, other than the rain and uh, and driving seven hours yesterday from Nashville over to North Carolina to the factory uh, with really no traffic, so that was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> nice just drive. not a not a lot of people on the road, so that was nice. But uh, no, man, everything is good, and uh, we are absolutely thrilled to be you know open and uh, producing a, a lot of really cool stuff. I've I've been in the factory since about five o'clock yesterday, and just the stuff that we're ready to ship out is is fantastic and you know i just uh i can't say enough good stuff about what's going on and we're very very happy and very grateful to be on with you guys today we appreciate it why don't you tell everyone that's watching a little bit about who you are kind of your your history with ludwig and and your role sure. these days um i uh have been with ludwig coming up on two years uh i worked for uh i, I worked for actually several several drum companies in the last uh 28 years and uh, was was one of the guys that helped Mapex get started in the States, which was great. Um, I worked for Dario for about a decade. Uh, it was the uh, Evans brand specialist for uh, for the bulk of uh, of that ten years, and um, was able to work with a couple of a couple of other drum companies, smaller drum companies over the last few years. And uh, Ludwig had been talking to me for a few years before that. And the timing just worked out two years ago for me to make the move and to come over. Um, I've been a vintage buff my entire life. Uh, as far as being a Ludwig player, I've been a Ludwig player, I think, since the day I started playing drums, was, which was uh, in 1978 when I was eight years old. Uh, and Ludwig, believe it or not, has actually been around longer than I've been around, which is way <laughs> longer than you guys have been around. But we just hit the 111-year uh, mark at the beginning wow. of the year. And, uh, I, you know, the first kit I ever played on was in 78 and it was on a w single headed blue Vista light. And, uh, that, that resided in the basement of my aunt and uncle's house. And, uh, I would, I would sneak off the bus about 50 stops early and go to their house and play. <laughs> and then my aunt would call my mom and dad and, you know, she'd let me play for a couple hours and, and she would go, okay, come and get him. He's done. <laughs> and we're done. Come get him. But it was always Ludwig, man. And, um, you know, I, I own a lot of great vintage drums and, um, there are a lot of great, great companies that are out there now making great stuff, but there's something special about Ludwig and my main kit that, uh, that I still play is a 57 WFL which um, is amazing. And, and as we get into this, there's a little more that we'll be able to talk about vintage and, and what someone can do to get close to that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, but thanks again for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, glad to have you here. Well, Sam, I mean, I mean, you know, we're talking about the, you know, talking about this vintage tone and you mentioned vintage a couple of times and Ludwig has that classic sound. I mean, let's just jump right into it. You guys, like I said, I don't know what the hell we're talking about. I'm just here to kind of learn some stuff too. So I'll let you guys dive right in. Cool. Great. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Ludwig right now has, you know, three main drum lineups. They have the, the legacy, the classic maple, and now new, the classic Oak. Uh, mm -hmm. so Josh, if you could, like, do you want to run us, give us kind of like the, you know, what makes all those cool, what makes them different? Uh, and you know, like, you know, what do they what do they kind of contribute to Ludwig's like overall uh, you know what what they can bring to a drummer? Well, I think if you look at, at those three items in particular, which uh, all those are made here in our our facility in Monroe, North Carolina, and and thankfully we've been able to stay open with minimal staff through this up until the last couple of weeks, and now we've got a, a little more staff on board making uh, making the products. But the products that we do make here, um, of course, all our all our snare drums are made here. Um, uh, with the exception of, of course, the imported stuff. Uh, so Black Beauty, Superphonics, um, the copper, uh, the bronze, the brass. 
Um, but as far as wooden drums go, we are still using a lot of the same molds that we were using, not only in the 80s when we moved here from Chicago, but back into decades ago. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, we've got, a, we've got a hoop mold for our bass drum hoops that are the, it's the same bass drum hoop molds that made Bonham and Ringo and uh, Ian Pace and Dino Dinelli and Bunny Carlos and Joe Morello, uh, Mitch Mitchell, uh, all uh, the heavy guys. Ginger Baker, yeah. you know, all, all the, all the slouches in history. <laughs> and we're still, we're still using those molds and there's, there's just something magic in those molds. And, you know, there's a certain sound that you do get from Ludwig and the, the traditional sound that you would get from Ludwig is, an, is really from our legacy series, which is a three ply, either three ply um, maple poplar maple or three ply mahogany poplar maple with a six ply maple reinforcement hoop. Mm -hmm. um, we still make this. And uh, the, you know, it's that, it's that it's really 1920s, 1930s through the 1960s with the mahogany. And then the seventies, we got into maple. We still make all those. And so it's very, very cool. But the, the biggest, uh, the biggest push and the bi biggest success for Ludwig in the last 20, 25 years has been the classic maple, which is a uh, seven ply maple shell. Mm -hmm. um, it's a thin shell, very resonant, uh, you know, sharp edges with a, with a slight round over. So the head seats really well and the head and the, and the shell are really married. So you get this really rich resonant sound bright because it's uh, it's maple, but you still get, you still get controlled warmth out of it, a lot of projection. And so that's where a lot of modern guys will go to uh, is, is that shell. Um, a few years ago we did the Keystone and the Keystone X, which was an Oak, and maple shell yep. and oak is more aggressive uh oak's got a lot more punch um again i can't stress how, how aggressive this shell is it is really really loud and um you know we we grow and we figure out how to do things the right way by doing things the wrong way and we did really well with the keystone x but we had started to see it kind of fall off over the last couple of years a lot of it is we didn't put the marketing behind it um we had so many things going on it's hard to nail down you know, it's hard to nail down exactly what we want to do sometimes and what we're capable of doing with the time allotted. And we honestly have one of the best marketing guys in the business, Uli Salazar. And um, we were talking to him for quite a while last last year about, well, what do we do for the Keystone X? Because we don't want to get rid of it. Um, but what are the limitations that were on that that we can kind of take off and make into something special? And so our team all got together and said, why don't we, we do classic maple? Why don't we do classic oak? And it'll have most of the same fittings that Keystone has, but it will have some better finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, it will have further reach because it's going to be within the classic line. And the further reach comes from the fact that you're able to customize it now, which you couldn't yeah. do before. You had to get the set, the set finishes. Um, we've got, and, and I know you guys have used the, um, what we called the, uh, the configurator and the configurator is now called the outfitter. Yeah. And, um, what you're able to do is you're able to go in and build out a classic maple, classic oak, legacy, whatever you really want. Um, you can go club dates, one that we had for a long time and club date was, was a, a throwback, a, an homage to the club dates that were made, you know, it really starting in the forties all the way through, through the sixties. Yeah. And um, so we redid the club date with a maple and poplar shell with just a round over. Mm -hmm. And that did really well in certain, in certain circles. It really wasn't big enough to keep as a full-time line. Mm -hmm. So we have taken the option of doing a, a club date build with the round edges and the flat imperial lugs or the bow tie lugs and put it in the, in the outfitter. Well, now you could go build a classic Oak in a club date build. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to go in and do a full seventies mod, and do curved spurs on a classic oak. I'm, I'm dying to see this. I'm dying to see somebody do mock lugs with curved spurs and blue and olive badges on a classic oak. It's yeah. just be, <laughs> be unstoppable. It, yeah. It's the machine like that's coming sizes to sizes too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a machine <laughs> that's coming to kill you. And um, you know that that's the cool thing about uh, about classic oak now is it, you know price wise it's about the same. It's a little bit less than classic maple. Um, our production time is anywhere between you know really right now four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. on being able to, to churn out a, a U.S. made kit. Um, but classic oak really is one of those things that we we went, well, let's give this a shot and see see how it does. But the more we started looking at it, the more we started just falling in love with it. Yeah. And we got the opportunity, I think in November, 
Um, I live in Tennessee and um, my wife and I were talking one night and she's, she's a photographer. She's just got great insight that I don't have. Uh, and I thank God I married up, but um, we were talking and she goes, what if we were to go to take the classic Coke and go to um, go to a winery where they've got all the barrels um, you know, and so you could see, you could see how the oak kit looks with the barrels. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's a great idea. I'm going to look around tomorrow. And so we're laying there about three o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I go, Heather. And I'm like hitting her. I go, what if we <laughs> took it? What if we took it to the one of the whiskey distilleries that, cause Jack Daniels and, and George Dickel are in, are in Tennessee, not mm -hmm. but an hour from us. Mm -hmm. And so I called, I called Uli the next day and I go, what do you think about this? He was like, yeah, let's do it. So I called George Dickel and said, Hey, this is what we're doing. Would it be cool to come shoot in the barrel house? And the girl I was talking to goes, yeah, <laughs> she goes, my husband's, my husband's a musician in Nashville. When do you want to come down? And so they, they let us come down and, uh, and shoot in the barrel house. And it had 11,000 barrels of whiskey in it. Yeah. And, um, it was really cool. Cause you drive up the mountain to get to it. They had to open the back door you can't stay in there for very long without passing out. I mean, it just, the ethanol that comes out of those barrels actually turns all the trees around the barrel house black <laughs> and uh, doesn't, doesn't hurt the tree at all. It just, and so, you know, you're thinking, oh, we're, we're going to die, but this is a lot of fun. But um, the girl that took us in there, uh, Kelly, I believe was her name, took us in and had this monitor and we're setting the drums up and Uli's setting up all his lights and getting the camera ready and everything. And um, we're going, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and she goes, oh, I, I have to have this monitor if the ethanol level gets too high in here and you guys take a flash, the whole place could explode. <laughs> and we're like, this is the greatest rock and roll story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so we, we shot there for probably about an hour and we got just gorgeous. I, I think I sent the photo over to you guys. You just yeah, we have it right now. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, it just, yeah, there, oh, there we yeah. go. Just gorgeous. And, um, it just, it, it just could not have gone better. And the people, the people at George Dickel couldn't have been nicer. Uh, Uli actually got to play in the barrel house, cool. which was uh, cool. really, really cool. So there's How'd a massive it sound in town. there. It's Oak man. And Oak <laughs> bouncing off of Oak and whiskey. How's it, how's it, it doesn't get sound? any it, better. Oh, it was amazing. It was really, really now. cool. But you know, you guys, I believe you guys have some classic Oak, um, on order right now. And, and what you can do is you can go in on, on, you know, in the configurator or the outfitter and you can call, you can, you can call the shop. You can get any color that we do in classic maple, which yep. is really cool. Um, you can get a couple of, uh, a couple of the finishes that are lacquer. This is the Tennessee whiskey appropriately. And, uh, then we've also got a, uh, a smoke, which is a, a grayish black. That's just scary. It's so beautiful. And then we do uh, a black, black, which is night Oak that we did on the Keystone X. Yep. But, yeah, you know, it's just it's really really cool, and we we try. The team that we've got now has a lot of reverence. We don't we don't think we're better than anybody that was here before. Maybe a couple of people. They might be better than no, but you know the the team that we've got now is is really good to get in a room and fight. I mean, fight it out, and it's not fighting for for ego. It's fighting to get the best product that we can. And um, so we, we've we've done some limited runs that have that have got some some cuts and some bruises and and some tears and blood all over. Um, but we've done some limited run in snare drums, which you guys you guys have done a few of those. I think um, you had the Carpathian Elm, you had the the Rosewood, I believe. But when it comes to kits, it gets a little tougher to do. And we did this kit, which is 110th anniversary in um, in emerald green pearl. And it's gold hardware, just yeah. absolutely stunning. We only built 70 of those. And the problem with us doing limited runs is if we do it right, those are gone in seconds. There, I mean, the when we did the um when we did the uh, rosewood snare drums, those as soon as we started making the calls, and even before we started making the calls, somebody let it slip in the factory that we were doing this. We had dealers that were calling us trying to get these in. We sold all of the rosewood snare drums in 15 minutes and i had i i had people calling me going i need rosewood and me saying I, we could only build i think it was like 25 or 30. we could only build 30 of them i had one dealer that i've known for almost 30 years go now i know where i stand with you because i didn't know about these I was like, it's, a, it's a drum but people were rabid about that drum yeah. um we did a uh, a limited edition rosewood 
uh, that we only did 40 of, and that was for this year. And I just not even probably 30 minutes ago found out that we actually have three of them left in mm -hmm. the factory. So if you guys got anybody that wants Carpathian Elm, we have three of them left. So we might. yeah. So, uh, but you know, we're always, we're always trying to come up with, uh, with interesting things that are not only, not only cool for now, but they're, uh, they're, very reverent to what we did back in the twenties and thirties, you know, when we really started building drums, we, we started in 1909, you know, we built the first bass drum pedal, I believe in 1916. And, um, you know, we're, we're just very fortunate to be a part of this. And, um, I, I think just like the Emerald Pearl, I can't really say what we're going to do, but I just saw, uh, color samples for the next round. That's going to come out probably in the third quarter. And I can assure you it's going to be very retro, but at the same time, it'll be classic maple. Uh, but it will be a very affordable limited edition that's going to be coming out in the third quarter. So just keep your eyes open for what, what we're doing. We're really just a bunch of knuckleheads. We're, you know, we're a bunch of drummers. We're a bunch of drum techs, drum builders. I I've been building drums since I was 18. And, um, I, I just, I love being in this factory. This is one of my favorite things to do. And I love digging through the trash because <laughs> it's great. I mean, parts and shells and, you know, I'll probably get fired now they find out I've been doing it for the <laughs> Okay. It's, it's part right. of the music, you know. We we have to dig through all the all the nooks and crannies of this place, find all the secrets and stuff too. So we're yeah, too. Yeah, it's what you got to <laughs> do when you're, when you're surrounded by tons of cool stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's always a little something always behind that other corner. Well, you know, it's it's cool because you know one of the things that I always want to do is I want to try to get my kit uh, back to original spec. And up until recently, I've not been able to do that. And, um, you know, like, like I said, I've got a, I've got a 57 WFL, which was William F. Ludwig before it went back to the Ludwig name, I believe in 1960, 1961, I could be, I could be wrong on that, but, um, I love that kit. And, uh, when I bought that kit, actually the, the short story of that is I tried to buy that kit from Atlanta pro percussion when I was 16 years old. And when I was working with Evans, I would go back in there and call on them and the kit was still there. And I said, you know, Ed, let me buy the kit. And I would throw money on his desk. And I'm the cheapest person alive, which goes back to all digging through the trash thing. But I, I would throw money on his desk and he just refused to sell it to me. And I told a friend of mine uh, about it years later. And he said, I got something in the back I want to show you. And so he, he took me to the back room of his warehouse and he had the bass drum and rack tom of a club date, the, my, my club date that I've got. And, um, I, I was in tears. He just gave it to me. And I said, you, you need to have this. It took me 12 years to find a floor Tom that, <laughs> that matched it. And so I brought the shell over here and had Matt, our painter paint it for me. And, and he was like, we want to make it pretty. I was like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> this thing looks like it was dragged behind a truck on a gravel road for about an hour. But you know, I, I wanted to get back to that original spec and for, you know, for people that want an original you know, an, an original looking kit that's, that's a little bit older. The outfitter is a great way to do it because like I said, other than right now, hoops, you still need to go with a 2.3 hoop, which our original hoops were, some of them were brass in the sixties, but, um, and, and before, but, uh, they were 1.6 millimeter. And so we use a 2.3 and other than the hoop, you can get really close to original spec. We can even do white interiors. Uh, we can do uh, baseball bat mufflers. We can do um, the curve spurs with the the blue and olive badge, or or the regular um, the regular Keystone badge or the Cast badge. There's just a lot of options. So we're going to be able to get the sound you're looking for. I mean, if you're looking for that that really rich, gorgeous mahogany kind of deep dark tone you're looking for something from the, you know, forties, fifties and sixties, we can do it. If you're looking for something with a little more punch, that's going to be the legacy maple. We can totally do that too, to the, to the 1970s specs. But then if you want something modern and sleek that just sings when you hit it, then you're going to go with classic maple. And if you want something a little more aggressive and blow out your neighbor's windows, classic Oak. So it's, it's all there. Yeah. No, I think the, like with the Oak too, like most, most, we, you know, you hit people with like, you know, oh, they're aggressive. And then, you know, I think the initial response is like, well, I don't want to like, I don't, I don't want people's ears to bleed. And, and it's not harsh. Oak is not like a harsh wood. It still had, it's still round. It's still, uh, it's still punchy. It's still it sculpted like, like a maple drum tone. It's just kind of has the volume turned up a lot. It's just a little uh, more pronounced. You're right. Yeah. 
You're yeah. right. And if you if you don't want somebody's ears to bleed playing drums, you you might want to re-examine your life. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, I mean, and the oak is not the oak's not one of those things that's just going to destroy everything around it. But it, like you're saying, it it's a, just a little more pronounced, um, and it, it's it's a different tone. I mean, different woods do different things. I've I've always been drawn to the mahogany. Um, and, and, you know, part of the reason is when I was, when I was a kid, they were never called vintage drums. They were called used and you could, <laughs> you could get them for really cheap. And I just kind of grew accustomed to that tone. And, um, it's funny guys who are my age and a little bit older, I'm 50, but guys who are a little bit older than me are huge Beatles fans. And I'm a big Beatles fan, but my Beatles was a punk band called X and, you know, DJ Bonebreak is the drummer for X and we're really fortunate. We've got DJ back on Ludwig with us uh, and he recorded all the early X albums on Ludwig. In fact, he got the very first Tennessee whiskey classic Oak. So oh, cool. it's very cool. But yeah. you know, that was, that was my point of reference was his Ludwig kit, which more and, and DJ doesn't even know more than likely it was late sixties, early seventies Ludwig. And um, I just, I grew accustomed to that sound and I love it, but people are always saying, well, how do I find my tone? How do I find my voice with, with yeah. Ludwig? And you totally can. You've got, you got such a wide menu to choose from. And now that the outfitter is, is up and running, you can trick it out the way you want to. Yeah. And the thing too, like when we, you know, if, if you've bought a Ludwig kit or shopped for a Ludwig kit at Chuck's, you have, you've been exposed to the outfitter in one way, shape or form. Um, cool. And the cool thing that really, it lets you go in and really see that, you know, the cool thing about Ludwig is you have all these, these vintage, uh, specs and sizes and, and finishes that you can go with, but you can also get a totally modern deep bass drum, 10, yeah. 12, 16, you know, uh, that you'd find anywhere else, but with, but with like an old school finish or you can go vice versa, you can get the old school sizes, but with like a modern lacquer, um, there, you know, the, the, so like a blank slate almost with that. And it's so cool that you can also marry that with like a modern classic maple shell, a, you know, maybe more vintage vibe legacy shell or now like the, you know, this brand new classic oak shell. It's all there at your fingertips, you know, whatever yeah. you, you want it to sound like, whatever you want it to look like, however many or few drums you want there to be. Sure. It's, and it's don't a forget. program. Well, and don't forget that in the configurator, it's not only kits. You can you can do snares, yeah. you know. And, and of course, we're we're famous for for snare drums, and uh, not as much the wooden snare drums as we are the metal, of course. Mm -hmm. But man, I'll tell you what the the opportunity to build out a uh, you know your own jazz fest. Of course, we we reissued the jazz fest, mm -hmm. and then to be able to do a, a '60s symphonic, which was not a symphonic drum, it was just a six and a half by fourteen eight lug, yeah. you know, legacy what we call legacy mahogany, you know, you've got that opportunity as well, but you know, the metal drums, while not yet on the configurator, the, you know, metal drums are, are the bulk of what we do. It's amazing to me to see how many black beauties we do a year. It, it's vulgar. And, <laughs> but you know, the black beauty, the black beauty and the superphonic are kind of the little black dress of the drum world. You, yeah. you have to have at least one of them. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and and everybody almost does have at least one of them. Uh, yeah. You know, I've got I've got an old Superphonic from the '60s, uh, and you know, like I was kind of mentioning, you you whether you know it or not, you have heard and you have loved the sound that those two drums produce. They've been on yeah. everything. Sure. Um, you know, as a as a non drummer, I do know about the Black Beauty <laughs> and um, uh, the one name. Oh yeah. That makes me sound like I know it when I'm talking to other drummers and bands. Yeah. Oh, I oh, yeah. I got a Black Beauty. I know what that's what that is. Um, but we actually got a, before we jump to Picard's question below, we actually got a cool one about snare drum since we're on the topic of it. Matthew asked, and it might go too deep. So we don't need to dive too far down this rabbit hole if we don't need to. Sure. But Matthew asked um, if we could go through some of the snares, Supra, Acro, Black Row, uh, Black Beauty, et cetera. Um, kind of confusing for the average snare collector. So if you want to maybe yeah, give kind of a hierarchy of of the snares, sure. Um, now that yeah. we're on that topic, sure. Well, it's not so much of a hierarchy. It's just a it's a spread, right? Yeah, a, a breath, yeah. a breath. Yeah, it's it's another menu. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's another menu. Depends on what you want. Black Beauty is really what everybody considers our our top of the heap, which is a brass shell that's been uh, that's been black plated mm -hmm. or uh, black nickel plated. Um, it's got a, a very, it's got a warm sound. Uh, it's, it's a little aggressive. Uh, brass is a little bit aggressive. Uh, the superphonic and the acrylite are the same shell. 
uh, the Superphonic is a chrome plated acrylite. And so the acrylite is an aluminum, a very uh, dry voice with the acrylite. And I, I believe it was Kenny Arnoff that in the eighties, that's what he was recording with was, was acrylite, which gave sure. that really great crack and, and, uh, that drier sound, the superphonic putting the Chrome inside and out brightens that drum up. It gives it, uh, I think it gives it a little more resonance, but you know, of course the superphonic is, is the other go-to drum and guys like Hal Blaine, and um, of course, John Bonham was playing was playing a 402, which is why I picked up a 402, you mm -hmm. know. And um, you know, it, it's just got that really beautiful punch to it. Um, the uh, the Acrolyte itself was really brought out as a student model drum, I believe, in the 60s. Somebody's going to call me out on that, and it's going to be 50s. But um, yeah, the Acrolyte was a was just an aluminum snare that was just not finished that was in a lot of student models. But mm -hmm. man it's a great drum too. It's just drier. It's, it's drier. And then the, the black plated acrylite was really, I think it was just a powder coating. Um, someone could, might be able to correct me on that, but it's really the same, the same thing as an acrylite, just, just a black version. That's been my impression too. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the same shell, same build. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's been finished in that kind of that galaxy black Right. Uh, coloring. Yeah. Yep. Right. And they're cool drums if you can pick them up. Cause you can, you yep. can usually find those for fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the, the superphonic is, is my go-to for metal drums. It's, yep. I, I love that drum. There's just, there's nothing I can't do with it. And, um, you know, it's a six and a half. I know five and a half or five was extremely popular until guys like, you know, Ian Pace. And I know Ian's a, Ian's a, a pro guy, which is cool, but, um, you know, Ian Pace was playing it you know, John Bonham played it. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys just loved it, but a lot of those guys that were more jazzy would go to the five and, uh, you know, but I, I'm a, I'm a six and a half guy. I'm, I'm kind of a troglodyte. I, I hit hard and, you know, horrible left hand. It just <laughs> hits stuff, but, yeah. but yeah. So, you know, here's the thing about the snare drums. If you guys don't mind me hopping in on this, yeah, please do. Um, you know, the, the black beauty, which is brass is fantastic. Uh, the, you know, superphonic, which is, um, which is aluminum is another great drum, but it's not really a, a, a secret too much because we we've had them out for quite a while, but the copper phonic is, um, is really one of my favorites. Uh, you know, all of us, all of us have tried out a copper phonic. That's the cool thing about being here and being kind of a little, little punk kid is, is getting to try stuff out. Mm -hmm. But the copper phonic, the copper gives a little more dryness to it, but it's got, it's got a little more sweetness to it than a uh, uh, than a uh, an aluminum, if that makes sense. It's it's still got that dry kind of powdery tone to it, but there's still just a, a little bit of punch. It's almost like if you had if you mixed aluminum and maple. That's that's kind of what you would get with the copper. Maybe a little bit darker, but but you are getting a really nice tone with that copper. Yeah. And um, the the raw copper has done amazingly well for us. Really, really well for us. And uh, we do that in a. a five, a six and a half and an eight. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, the eight is actually doing really well right now. Eight inch drums seem to be back. I have a horrible feeling we're going to start seeing not even, not really horrible. I shouldn't say that, but I've got a very strong feeling that, uh, we're going to see piccolos coming back again pretty soon in the next year or two. Sure. I see that yeah. happening, but yeah. as of right now, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a wild west. Everything is all over the place, but yeah. those eight inch copper drums have done really well. There's a, there's a lot of body that you get out of that drum. Um, my wife and I went to see the Rack and Tours in August, and um, it seems like that was the last time we left our houses. Is, is in August, but um, uh, Patrick Keeler was playing a raw brass and a raw copper, and I think the copper was his main drum. Mm -hmm. Man, it just the the voice was just amazing, just amazing, really nice. Yeah, no, it's interesting to see to hear you describe the copper because when I when I was was a and being and seeing. Uh, you know, Black Beauty Supra, and like when the Copper Phonic came out, uh, I, I came away with the impression, I think similar to what you did, but I always kind of described it as like a clean brass. So it still had yeah, a little bit yeah, of yeah. metallic in there, but it was, it was it, you know, it didn't have the the overtones that you usually associate with those drums. Almost um, a little sandy quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I like I liked the word used too, like it, was, it, was, it breathed a lot, a lot, a lot, I mean, not a lot better, but it, it yeah. Right. If we had that right. character to it. That, you know, it's funny. That's one of those drums that that's got a really wide tuning range. Yeah. I would, I just, I don't want to hear it get choked out because at that mid range, it sounds really sweet. And that's, yeah. that's where that sweet sound comes in. That sounds a lot like bronze 
to me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, bronze and phosphor bronze just uh, they're not quite as aggressive as uh, as brass. They just have a little bit sweeter tone. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the sweetness is tempered a little bit in that in that copper that makes it an unbelievably well rounded drum. Yeah. And you know, it, it's it's hydrospun like the rest of our shells. So it's it's got that certain something that not a lot of the other copper drums have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a great drum. Yeah, those are super cool. Well, we have a second, guys. I want to remind everyone that's watching, if you, if you weren't here at the beginning, we are giving away a super cool Ludwig Atlas snare drum case. If you want to enter to win, drop a drum emoji in the comments, and we'll pick a winner at the end of the stream. Super, super cool. Yep. Those, are, those are nice cases, too. Doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Um, and we had a couple cool questions that I think would uh, be uh, awesome to jump into right now that were thrown out there while you guys were yeah. talking about a being snares and stuff like that um this one's cool from picard any plans to reissue 14 inch drums with six lugs like the pioneer in the classic 70s era 10 by 14 rack tom well the uh the 10 by 14 you can do in the in the outfitter it's not a standard it's not a standard configured drum in any of our uh any of our outfits but you can build that and that and that's the whole purpose is to be able to get back to stuff like that now when it comes to a six lug, I am a massive, massive fan of the Pioneer. My main drum, uh, other than the Superphonic, is a six and a half. It's a six and a half by 14 six lug. And it's not, I don't think it's a Pioneer. I can't, I can't remember the name of that drum. And it's from 1949. I love that drum. It is just amazing. And uh, the problem with coming out with a six lug drum is... The six lug drum, I think the the Pioneer, <laughs> when it came out, I think it was like a forty nine dollar drum, <laughs> and uh, if you wanted, uh, if you wanted to get um, a wrap finish, I think it was like fifty seven dollars. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. If you yeah. wanted chrome, um, if you wanted chrome, it was an extra four dollars, and if you wanted nickel, it was cheaper. And, but the Pioneers just sound so great. They yep. they're such a great sound, but the problem is for us to come out with a with a six lug drum, it's got to be built out on all of our computer systems because we do everything CNC to make sure it's it's you know dead on. To do it properly, we'd have to do it in a legacy shell, and so you're talking about a six lug drum that would probably street price at about six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. So it's going to be a little tough to do. That we always joke around that our biggest enemy is ourselves because there are so many Ludwig drums out there and. You know, the cool thing is the, that with the older drums, uh, there's, a certain, there's a certain tone to them, but a lot of times you'll find stuff that's a little bit out of round or maybe the heads don't seat properly because of them being out of round. Yeah. might be ply separations. And we try, to, uh, we try to avoid that as much as possible. It happens from time to time because we're still using a lot of the same machinery. That's, that's, part, of the, uh, that's part of the allure of, of Ludwig. We're making some really, really great stuff. But as far as the Pioneer goes, we've talked about it and uh, I, I would love to do it. I just don't know that we could hit a price point that would be, that would be acceptable to, to our customers. You know, we're, we're okay with coming out with the, with the jazz fest, which is the, the same thing, but in an eight lug version, that's seven ninety nine because that's a drum that can be, you know, anybody can use. And it's a great drum. The pioneer is, is one of those love them or hate them sort of things. And for us to come out with a drum that expensive, that <laughs> had six lugs, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Roll the sure. dice there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. We got another great one. Um, for those that are joining us, by the way, if you if you were getting excited for the rocket launch and it got canceled, welcome to the show. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. We're happy to be your plan B today. Um, <laughs> if you are joining us now, and because uh, I see some of the people joining us, we're giving away one of these. It's super cool. Snare drum. Drop a snare drum emoji in comments. You're entered to win. El Toro, we see you. We see you out there. Um, but let's let and Dave Mann, thanks for joining us. Thanks for dropping that in. Cam Cooper. Um, let's drop in that last question because I thought that was a really great one from Bermuda. Hi, yeah. John. Um, Difference between the raw brass and the uh, the black beauty, which uh, you know. Well, actually, could are you able to tell us the story behind the raw brass? Um, you know what? I don't really know how it got started. The guy that actually developed that or that that really pushed that idea is two rooms away from me right now. And I think it was just the opportunity to to try a, a more raw sound to see to see what happens it's certainly a more open sound it's uh it's not as controlled and by the way 
for those of you that don't know Bermuda Schwartz, John is one of the best people and one of the just most killer drummers I've ever seen. Weird Al's drummer and just mm -hmm. an amazing drummer, amazing photographer. I'll just throw that out there for, for future reference. But um, he's also an amazing member to send the community in general. Like he is yes, always he is. answering questions, Ludwig or otherwise, all over the internet. It's it's crazy how yeah. he manages to find the time to do all the things he does for the for himself and the community at large. Like yeah. He's a good man. He's yep. a good man. In fact, uh, if you've not seen we you know the new Sonic that we do. Uh, we did a uh, we did a limited run or a, a custom run of Digital Black Oyster, and uh, John got one of the kits and <laughs> posted a picture of himself. He had a shirt made that matched the Digital Black Oyster. It's fantastic. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we had to find it and put it up. It's awesome. But um, no, the the um, the plated shell, the, the the black nickel plated is is going to actually have a smoother sound. It, it's kind of funny because. We're able to look at wood like you, if you look at like a walnut, walnut is a darker tone. Mahogany, it's a little darker than maple, is a darker tone than that, but not quite as dark as mahogany. It's almost like uh, and then, of course, those are those are certainly darker than maple, which is a little brighter tone. Birch is even brighter visually than maple. But it almost seems that with very few exceptions, the color of the wood almost dictates the, the tonality of it. And I know that's that's not science, I don't think. So I'm not a scientist, so don't quote me on that. But to me, I've always been able to equate, you know, the the color of the wood with the with the darkness, the tone of the drum. And I think with the uh, with the black nickel plating that we do on the brass shell, it it darkens it up, it smooths it out a lot. The raw is just kind of exactly what what it is. It's it's raw. Not every drum is going to sound exactly the same because you know the inside and the outside do have that patina on it, which is going to it's going to dampen different parts of the shell. Different parts of the of the patina are you know are going to be at different parts of the drum. So it's almost like every drum you get is a little bit different than anything else that's out there. It's, it's extremely cool. And the great thing about the raw drums, whether it's the raw uh, brass or the raw copper, as those drums age, there's no finish on those. So as they age, that patina is going to continue to change. And so by the end of, of its life, which, you know, who knows what the end of a, a drum's life is going to be, it's going to be a completely different drum than when you picked it up. It's very cool. It's it's almost the most organic thing that we do because yeah. it's changing daily. It's very cool, but it, they're all great sound. The cross stick on the raw copper on the raw brass is phenomenal. Yeah, really, really phenomenal. No, those drums look incredible. That was the selling point for me was yeah. that you could finally have a metal shelled snare that didn't look like anybody else's. And it won't. That's the, the same, great thing. Yeah. quote unquote snare that you do, and and it's just. And to see the color too that comes out of those shells, especially on the brass, yeah. you get browns, yellows, golds, blues. Sure. Yeah. Greens. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, everyone it's is different. Phenomenal, and they're yeah. great sound in drums, and and it's it's a great talking point at the club in the studio. People go, "Wow, what is that? Yeah. That's awesome." So yeah, yeah, it's it's a really cool. That's a really cool line that we do mm -hmm. in both brass and copper. Yeah. No, I, I always like saying it's a it's a naked black beauty whenever yeah. anybody asks what it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally. So yeah, we we did uh, we had a couple of um, hammered acrylites that we did that were done by accident. Somebody hammered them in in the plant, and so that was fun to say it's a you know it's a naked hammered superphonic, <laughs> and, and people are like oh we'll take it. So that was cool. That was really cool. And that, that you know I love screw ups in the factory. Screw ups end up being so much fun because yeah. you'll call somebody and go, "Hey, <laughs> don't tell anybody. I have three of these. I'll take all of them." Yeah, you know there there are certain guys that will grab any of the weird weird stuff that they can. I, I'm the same way. I, I'm horrible at taking in orphan drums, mm -hmm. and I got so much stuff that doesn't match. But man, you can mix and match tonally, and it just sounds amazing. So yeah. I, I kind of like our screw ups. It's a lot of fun. No, and we as a store have taken advantage of that too. Like you'll, you know, if you've come into the store every once in a while, we'll, you know, either have something sitting on the shelf or have just gotten something that's, you know, weird or, you know, unintentional, happy accidents. You know, we get yeah. calls from you guys all the time too, where it's just like, hey, this, I don't know how it happened, but the, here we go. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, you know, sometimes human error can be really, really great. Yeah. And it's and, great. Uh, like every time we've got, it's not like they're, uh, they're not, they aren't just cast out. Like it's, you know, we get them and they're, yeah. they're these really cool, unique, like 
you know, not one of a kind, but very limited instruments that that just put a little spin on something that you may already either have or know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, that's super special, I think. Yeah, yeah, and it and it's fun, and you know, you say super special, and it, and it may sound a little silly to say this, but this is a super special place. Yeah. And um, you know, to be able to come in here and see Miss Anne. Um, Miss Ann's been here since I think 1984. Like, I think she was in the building when they moved in and, uh, she's wrapped just about all the drum sets that we've, that we've wrapped in this, in this factory. And, um, I saw her a little earlier today and we, we sat and talked for a little bit and, you know, there are people that, that when they have their drum set wrapped, they will call and say, look, I, I want to make sure that it's Miss Ann. <laughs> like, well, yeah, it's it's always going to be Miss. Anne. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that it's Miss Ann that d did the wrapping on my drums. I'm like, okay, and so you know, she's done all of Ringo stuff. Yeah, she's she's amazing, and um, people people love the people that are here. We uh, Lloyd, who's the guy that does the uh, reinforcement hoops, he's the only guy that does the reinforcement hoops here on the Legacy stuff. I don't want anybody else to do that. Now, after you know, however many years, thirty two years of building drums. You know, I know how to do that stuff. I don't trust myself to do it in here. I want him to do it. You know, I want him to do it. He's the I, want him, yeah. I want him to do my edges. I can do really great edges, but I want him to do those edges. It's just, there's something special when certain hands touch, you know, touch the drums. Uh, Dennis, a uh, guy by the name of Dennis does all of our hammering here. And uh, I, I believe Dennis is a, is a minister. We've had people come in here and ask him to bless their drums. You, <laughs> you did this and he'll go back and you know, without, without getting too heavy, people will go back and they'll have a little meeting with, with him and he'll, he'll say a blessing over the drum. That's so and, cool. And it's yeah. the coolest thing. It's only in the music industry. Would you get, <laughs> would you get this yeah, no up. kidding. Right. But I will right? say, I mean, you know, in storied companies and companies that go back this long, I mean, it really, it's, it's heartwarming to me. It, it's, it's uh, reassuring to me also that music can't, Music industry can't just be mach machinized, machinized. We can't be taken over by robots, basically, right. because we really care about those that are touching these products with their hands and finishing them with care and with passion and years sure. of experience. I mean, yeah, it might be maybe p potentially more perfect with the CNC machine, but like that's not what you want out of it. You want it to be that sound, and that sound is, devi is defined by the hands that crafted it. Yeah. Well, you know, and there's, there's, there's something to be said for pure beauty but there's i think there's even more to say about the scars and to me the beauty is in the scars and to see to see things that are not exactly perfect i mean our drums are great but you go in and look at some of the machinery that we've got we've got some drilling machines that go back to the 20s i want my drums built on those you know there there's just something about that i'm i'm a machine guy i love i love tools i, I work on cars you know my son and i build stuff all the time i work with wood i work with metal and, um, you know, I, there's just something about seeing people getting their hands on it and making it that's just so unbelievably special that it's not just something going through the assembly line and, you know, punching out some holes and slapping on some lugs and throwing it in a box and filling it with packing peanuts. It's not like that. You know, everybody's looking at these, you know, our quality control gets better and better every year. And uh, we want to make sure that it's right. It's not always going to be perfect, but that that's part of it. You know, that's part of it is is to know that you've got a connection with with this place that's been around since 1909. I mean, if you if you look back at the history, we've been through we came in before the fall of the Ottoman Empire. We've mm -hmm. been through two world wars, something like something like 14 pandemics. This is this is not new for us. Which <laughs> yeah. is crazy. I think well, we've I mean, been on that, like on that topic, that? I mean, we should just we should just show this photo real quick because uh this is this has got to be late '60s, um, yeah. in our store when we were downtown in D.C. That's Marge Levin right there, and what's wow. right in front of her but a Ludwig kit right there. Yep, I would imagine Blue Sparkle. <laughs> I would imagine Blue. My my partner Mike Nealon, who takes care of uh, takes care of the <laughs> West Coast and and uh, some of the big box stores, uh, has a theory that that more than half of the people that started uh, playing Ludwig when they were kids. In the sixties and seventies, played Blue Sparkle, and I'll be every show. I'll hear him go Blue Sparkle one more. I mean, people just play that that kid, and it's a club date. My my absolute favorite. I yeah. love that. What a great picture, though. That <laughs> is too awesome. cool. That too is cool. And that was fantastic. that was right before you know, right before um, 
the riots in DC, we were burned out. This when we were, you know, in this place here. So it's just it's interesting. These these companies persist beyond history. I mean, it's almost like you know we're the arbiters of the whole thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. What's that? What's that kit behind you there, Adam? Is that a Ludwig right there? Oh, that one. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> beauty. <laughs> this right here. How convenient. That is yeah. lovely. Ah, look look at that right there. Bless you, boys. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still didn't there. Even realize that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh the yeah, that you was, have when you're in the store. Oh. <laughs> it really wasn't. I had no clue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it like planned? I said, I don't know where I am right now, but you know, there it is. <laughs> we had our people sneak in. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like we, you know, we stocked the whole range. So like we've we've talked about all these all these kits, all these snares. These are things that we have on hand all the time. So even if we don't have the color we probably have an example of the drum you want, or even if we don't, you know, so for kits, but then with the snares, we stock every size of every metal shell. Uh, we stock the jazz fests, um, you know, so like if you, you know, if you want to really come in and ABC, the subtle differences between the black beauty, the raw brass and like a polished, you know, shell, you can do that um, at any time. You don't need to set up an appointment or, you know, like, any of that well i guess now you maybe maybe you do but <laughs> yeah we're working but on a little it, a little bit of that we're working yeah, on some of those I things just run out with a right. snare. <laughs> but that it's all there window um, hell yeah you know, so that's awesome uh, yeah yeah then you know we and myself and all the all the drum guys you know we've all played these drums we you know we have our opinions but we're happy you know we love taking them out because we love hearing these snares too uh, you know these yeah. they're the snares that are in our heads just like yeah. they're probably the snare that's in your head so yeah, we're yeah. we're so fortunate. It's it's very it's very weird, uh, and I feel very lucky to be a part of of that sound and mm -hmm. the sound that I heard my entire life. You know, listening to Zeppelin. You know, listening to whoever it was. You know, all the punk stuff that I was into. All those were you know were superphonics and blowing my ears out. And yeah, they're you know it's probably superphonics that damage my hearing. You know, <laughs> pretty so. This is reparation. Me working here. This is the, yeah. they're paying me back for me losing my hearing and and knuckles that don't work anymore. And yeah, that's good. That's real yeah, good. Battle but, scars. It was, it was makes this fun. Yeah, exactly. It's the beauty, of course, the beauty is in the scars. Like I was saying earlier. And you know what? You guys have been so supportive of us since. Good gracious, going almost seventy years back. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, Probably we're, we're sixty-two time, years, yeah. and it's been like we saw. I mean, about that long. So that's yep. amazing. Crazy. Crazy. That's amazing. Well, we appreciate it too, and I think uh, I think it's probably time we pick a winner for this thing. Yeah. Um, for those that have been watching, we are giving away one of these. Uh, what is it? A Ludwig Atlas snare drum case. Yep. Super sweet, red and black. Um, if I had, I have drums around me, but I literally can't do a drum roll, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> and we're just gonna throw this winner up on the screen, and the winner is. RJ, RJ. Hey, buddy, how's it going? RJ James. RJ, hit us up on Instagram, uh, at Chuck Levins on Instagram. We'll get that info from you, and we'll get this uh, case out to you. Everyone that's watching, um, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram. We do this Chuck Levins live stream every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, we are we got plenty more that we are working on and rolling on um, coming up in the, the next coming weeks. Um, and this is also where we're going to be talking about kind of what's happening at the store, how things are evolving as we open or maybe not, or kind of walk through this sort of situation. We're kind of learning everything day by day. So this is your chance to kind of get it, you know, in real time from us, either in the store or remote like Sam is. Um, so RJ, congratulations. We'll deal with you after the stream. Um, if anyone else is looking to, you know, you want to see things on the stream, you want to throw questions at us, um, please do hit us up. Um, we have a, a whole email dedicated to it live at chucklevins.com so if you there's topics you want us to cover there's questions that you have there's anything you want us to go over on these streams hit us up there we'd love to hear from you um josh thank you for being here you got any final thoughts or or statements for the for the fellows in the in the in the audience i'll tell you for everybody thanks so much for supporting us this is uh <clears throat> this has been a crazy year for all of us and um we we in no way consider it a throwaway year we're going to keep pushing uh, you're going to see some really cool stuff coming out, some more limited stuff coming out uh, fairly soon. 
Speed King is going to be coming out later in the year, which we're super excited about. But um, more more than what's important to uh, to how we're conducting our years, we want you guys to take care of yourself, and uh, we we really appreciate everybody's support over the last hundred and ten years. You know, I haven't been here that long, but um, but I certainly know the love that that people have for this brand. It is equaled from the love that this brand has for you. So thank you guys very much. We really sincerely appreciate it. And I was, I mean, even going into the stream, I thought it was so cool that, you know, seeing that Chuck of, of my grandmother was 60 years ago, looking at this, at this drum kit. And today we're going virtual live stream on YouTube and Facebook in a, in a time when who the hell thought this was coming, how cool yeah. that we're still, we're still telling the story that many years later and, you know, on into the future. It's just a really, it's a really cool thing to be a part of that past and a part of what's to come. Yeah. You bet. You bet. So. Josh, again, thank you so much. Thanks for thanks to you. Thanks to Ludwig. Thanks for doing all the awesome stuff that you do and the support that you've given us over the decades. Thanks, uh, guys. Sam, good to see you. Um, too. Hopefully in, in person more soon. Uh, masks in hand and all, all super prepared. Um, but everyone else, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, tune in next week, 4 o'clock. Chuck Levin's live. We've got another, one, another cool one coming. So uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Thanks again. See you.